Let's talk about the waiver wire pickups for week 18. So number one on my list is a guy that I have been high on all year, Keontae George. George looks like he's finally set to get the minutes that he needs to take that next step. The rookie has already had a pretty strong season. He's definitely had his growing pains like any rookie does, but he has flashed enough to where the Jazz now feel comfortable inserting him into the starting lineup. Over the last three games, he supplanted Chris Dunn, and he has rewarded the Jazz for making that decision. He's averaged around 35 minutes, he scored around 21 points, he's dished out around 6 assists, and has grabbed 3 rebounds per game. He's also gotten 1.7 swipes per game, and has knocked down an absurd 4.7 three-pointers per game. Now, he did have one huge game where he knocked down 9, but still... This is not too unreasonable in terms of what to expect from him moving forward. He may be a bit limited in terms of blocks and his shooting percentage might be a bit volatile, but he's already taken some big strides this year. Early on, he was shooting around 39%, and over the last month, he's improved to around 48%. And during this three-game stretch where he started, he's knocked down 51% of his shots. And I think with more minutes, he's only going to improve. And while his defensive rating at 123 is a bit higher than the NBA average of around 116, I think he'll definitely get that number down. He's shown that he has very strong hands. I've seen him come out of scrums numerous times with a loose ball. And I think with more minutes, he's only going to improve in those areas. As it is, over these last three games where he started, he's averaged double his season average in terms of steals. And I think that's going to continue down the stretch. At this point, the Jazz's play-in hopes are fading quickly. And I think George may be the spark that they need. I could see him getting close to 30 to 33 minutes a night from here on out. I think he's a great target in dynasty leagues, but I also think he's going to have a very strong finish in both points and category leagues this year. So if you're in need of a guard that's going to be able to knock down threes in a hurry, can score points, and is a good playmaker, you definitely want to give George a look. As it is, he's rostered in about 45% of leagues, but if he is somehow available in yours, I would not hesitate to grab him. I think he could be a league winner. Next on the list is Marvin Bagley. Marvin Bagley came into a great situation in Washington. The Wizards pretty much have nothing to play for besides the lottery, so I think Bagley's going to get all the minutes he can handle from here on out. The Wizards traded away Daniel Gafford, and Bagley looks to be the guy who they're going to use to replace him. He's delivered a double-double in three of the last four games, and over the last four weeks, he's seen some pretty solid production. He's averaged around 12 points, he's grabbed 11 rebounds, he's dished out two assists, He's also gotten 1.3 steals and has blocked one shot per game. And with the Wizards not really having much depth at center, I think Bagley's going to get all the minutes he can handle from here on out. Of course, he does have a pretty extensive injury history. He's only managed to average 37 games per season over his last four years. And I think at this point, if you add him, you kind of have to bake that in. But as long as he's averaging a double-double, you have to pick him up. Next up is Grant Williams. Williams is only rostered in about 36% of the leagues, and he, like Bagley, is benefiting from a trade and a good situation. The Hornets have very little depth at center. Mark Williams has been out most of this year, and he still does not have a timetable to return. So really, behind Nick Richards, there isn't much. And I think Williams is set to have a big role off the bench in Charlotte. Since coming over from Dallas, he's been pretty productive. In 29 minutes per game, he's averaged around 19 points. He's grabbed around 5.5 rebounds. He's dished out 2 assists, nearly gotten 1 steal per game, and has knocked down 3 3-pointers per game. And I think as long as he's getting minutes close to the 30s, he is a must-roster player. The Hornets also traded P.J. Washington, Gordon Hayward, and Terry Rozier this year. And those voids haven't really been filled. Not to mention, LaMelo Ball's been out of the lineup for a while too. Ultimately, with the Hornets season pretty much over, I think players like Brandon Miller and Grant Williams are going to get all the minutes they need. This team is looking to develop players on the roster. They're obviously going through a transitional period. And if you're looking for a big that should get some good opportunity down the stretch, I think Williams could be your guy. I definitely expect his rebounding to improve. But even if it doesn't, he is still worth the pickup. Lastly, I wanted to make a couple of honorable mentions for deeper leagues. I want to talk about Eric Gordon and Simone Fontecchio. Both players kind of bring the same set of skills. They're going to get you points, three-pointers, and should grab you about a steal per game. Gordon is a better defender. He'll get you some more steals than Fontecchio, just slightly, and he'll also get you some block production. The Suns have a pretty tight rotation, and while Gordon's role has been a little bit smaller this year, he's definitely been very consistent. And I think while he's producing the way he is, he's worth owning. Fontecchio was brought into Detroit to kind of replace Boyan Bogdanovich. And while he probably won't do that exactly, he definitely will get close and he'll get the minutes to at least try. He's a better pickup in points leagues, but if you're in need of threes and points, I would definitely give him a look. At this point, we're heading down the home stretch. If you're holding on to players like Mark Williams and Ben Simmons, 
or even players like Jordan Clarkson and Keldon Johnson, I would consider moving them if it means it'll help your odds of making the playoffs. Those are some waiver wire pickups to consider for week 18. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and let me know your thoughts heading into week 18 in the comments below.